The Lord God may have had a hand in it, certainly. But where daffodils came in, he's had an awful lot of help from Michael Jefferson Brown, daffodil breeder extraordinary. To Mr. Brown, as to the daffodil pioneers of the past, the challenge is to leave the world of the daff a better place than you found it. And through their years of dedication, we now have big daffs and small daffs. Daffs with long trumpets and daffs with short ones. Daffs with two heads and daffs with five. Pure white daffs and daffs with white petals, but a trumpet of subtlest salmon pink. To a man like Jefferson Brown, life is a never-ending quest for a new experience in the field of daffodils. He's chasing rainbows, and he won't be satisfied till he's got a daff for every colour. You'd think with 10,000 different kinds in the world already, 25 created by him personally, he'd be ready to pack it in and grow roses. But no. When your daffs have family trees like dukes and racehorses, and you once sold a single bulb to America for 400 pounds, there's always the dream of assisting at the birth of a daff the like of which the world has never seen. When did um, experts like yourself start improving on nature? Well, do, I, I don't know that we improve on nature. We augment it, perhaps. And uh, this started, really, in the last century, about the 1850s, basically, when uh, there was the controversy about Darwin's theory of evolution. And we got uh, one or two play people playing around with daffodils with an idea of uh, proving that uh, <laughs> there was something in breeding and uh, proving theories of inheritance. From that time, there's been a steady increase in the interest in daffodils, and it's been basically in England that this has been done. We are the centre of daffodil breeding in the world. How do you go about the business of uh, taking two dissimilar daffodils and producing a, a completely new one? The practical details are very simple. You, you pinch a brush from the children's paint set, you run to a flower that you think selected as one parent with some of the characteristics you want in your new visualised daffodil. What's that one there? Well, this is a seedling, but it's, it's uh, more or less the same as the little wild one of Wordsworth's uh, fame. We take the pollen from that one and double it onto the stigma of one like this, which is the nearest we've got at the moment to the pheasant's eye type. Is now that the narcissus? That, yes, although narcissus and daffodil are synonyms. This is really the basic cross that produced all the range of daffodils that are normally grown now, the trumpet kind, little trumpet kind, with the, uh, what people call the narcissus type. And from that you've got uh, all the intermediate types, such as this one here. Basically, the seed takes uh, five years to grow into a bulb sufficiently big to give a flower and it might take several generations before you've got the characteristic that you want. So that you've got a five year period and then probably two or three years testing that kind and then another five year period. And if you've got three generations, you can imagine you're perhaps 30, 40 years before you've got what you're after. Now that is your great breakthrough, isn't it? Could you describe that? Well, now this is one we call Thunderbolt. It is, it looks the normal daffodil shape, it has the centre here, the trumpet, which is longer than the length of the petal. So it is what we term a trumpet daffodil and not a short cupped one. Yet it, it is, has the orange It does. It has, it has complete orange right down to the very base of the uh, trumpet at the back. And now the petal's much, yellow. How, yes, the petal is yellow. How much is that uh, worth? Well, this one, because there are very few bulbs of it, we would want about £100 a bulb for this one. Though we have others of this persuasion, not quite so good, which you could have for a modest £10 or so. But when can the, the gardener, I mean, that's very rarefied, when can the ordinary gardener hope to get, assuming he wants one, I'm not sure that I really like that colour, but assuming he <laughs> wants one, um, an orange trumpeted yes. uh, yellow petal daffodil, when can he get one for a price he can afford? Well, now, 
assuming that he is going to pay perhaps 25p a bulb, which I reckon to be oh, a good price, but uh, most people can afford nowadays, I should think he's got to wait for Thunderbolt. He'll have to wait uh, 15, 20 years, something like that. Well, now, you, you've achieved, or you're on the way to achieving um, a great breakthrough with Thunderbolt, but what about um, the future? Are you concentrating on that, or have you got other No, plans? no, no, there's, the possibilities are almost endless. We're, we're also working on the white and pink ones, because some of the later flowering ones, like King Tut and others, have got a lavender cast in the pink, and one hopes that after a few generations you can act accentuate this lavender and make it into, uh, well, not purple, perhaps, but uh, verging on in that sort of range of the spectrum, maybe towards blue. Surely, uh, you know, purple daffodils or blue daffodils are, are a complete negation of what nature no, no, should be. No, 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 no. I won't accept that. Admittedly, we haven't got blue daffodils in nature, but we have got all green daffodils uh, in wild, so that uh, I don't think it's stretching nature too much to have a nice white petaled one with a pale blue centre. So, though I don't expect to see it in my lifetime, I think it is a possibility. But are you going to work towards it even though you don't expect to see it? Oh yes, oh yes, certainly. Because on the way you will, meet, you will have a, a series of flowers that will be pointing the direction and still be very pleasant. In lavender shades and this sort of thing. The, the, Possibilities are almost endless.